Welcome to Netlinux's tutorial on Network Analysis Part 1. In this tutorial, we will walk through the components of social network analysis, how to build a social network in Netlinux, and how to clean your data by aggregating and removing false positive aliases. Netlinux uses the social network analysis model to visualize how individuals interact with one another through online conversations. Where the text analysis focused on the content of conversations, network analysis focuses on the relationships and interactions happening within a network. There are two components to visualizing a network, nodes and edges. Nodes represent individuals, organizations, or other entities, and these are the dots in our diagram. Edges, which are the lines between the nodes, illustrate an interactive connection, so for example a conversation. Netlytic can discover two types of networks, name networks, who mentions whom, and chain networks, who replies to whom. The process is similar to text analysis. First you will need to run the analysis of the data set, and then you can visualize. Let's build a communication network by beginning on your home screen. Select the data set you would like to work with, and click the Network Analysis tab up in the main menu. Within the Network Analysis page, there are two tabs, and you have the option to build two types of networks, a name network and a chain network. As mentioned before, name networks are built based on who mentions whom. Specifically, this approach identifies personal names mentioned in the body of each message and connects the sender to everyone mentioned in his or her message. Additionally, this approach also allows to connect anyone who is mentioned in the same message together. For this option, click the See More Processing Options arrow, then select either connect all people whose names co-occur in the same messages, or just people whose names mentioned in close proximity, such as in the same sentence. For example, with this forum a message, we can build a name network, which would create an edge between the nodes representing Anne and Steve, as well as an edge between Anne and Natasha. So this network would connect the sender, Anne, to everyone mentioned in her email. By selecting the More Processing options, you can also create a name network where only the people whose names mentioned in close proximity would be connected. For instance, an edge would connect Steve to Natasha based on where their names were located in the message. When working with data from Instagram and Twitter, instead of relying on personal names to connect people, the name network relies on usernames to discover connections. For instance, with this Twitter message, we could build a name network which would connect the username Chiflo to Joe Prof, as well as create a connection between Chiflo and V Moscow. A chain network is built based on information about direct interactions among online participants, such as direct replies. Such information is not available for all types of data sets, but if it is available, it will be stored in the data fields such as in reply to or to. If such fields are present in your data set, Netlytic will connect the names or usernames listed in the from or author field to the name or usernames listed in the in reply to or to field to build the chain network. For instance, with our for message here, a chain network would build a connection between Sam, who is the sender, and Gabriel, who is the previous poster. Twitter and Instagram are special cases. For them, you can build a chain network even if your dataset does not contain the in reply or to field. For Twitter and Instagram, a message, if it is a direct reply, will begin with the username. Netlytic will use this information to identify messages addressees and automatically build a chain network. For example, we could create a connection in a chain network with this Twitter message between Gruz and Sydney Eve because the message begins with the username. Additional information displayed on this window includes the reset and reanalyze buttons. At any time, you can reset the data back to its original state and reanalyze. Resetting does not mean that you're deleting the data, you're only undoing any analysis done up until this point. The export button allows you to download the data in a variety of formats which are compatible with several other popular social network analysis programs, such as UCI Net, 
Pyak, and Gephi. The Visualize button will display a network in a new window. On this page, we also see the number of nodes and edges that make up the network, as well as the number of names found within the network. Netlytic automatically recognizes the dataset type, but if you've uploaded your dataset from an external file, please use the provided drop-down option to select the correct dataset type manually. Now that we know a little more about how name and chain networks are created, let's walk through how to build and clean your network. For this example, we will be looking at a Facebook dataset which captured conversational data from the New Democratic Party's official page during the 2015 Canadian federal election. To build either the name or chain network, first make sure all messages have been analyzed. Depending on the size of the network, this may take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. Next, click Visualize. The screen that pops up will have a status wheel. If it is moving, the network is being built. Once it becomes static, Netlytic is finalizing the visualization, loading the network file into your browser, and plotting the network. All of the features available in this window will be covered in our Network Analysis Tutorial Part 2. Let's walk through the same steps to create a chain network. You will find that when building name and chain networks, the visualizations will differ from one dataset type to another, and this is because of the way people communicate differs from platform to platform. We will walk through two processes to help increase the accuracy of your network's visualization. First, we will take a look at how to remove nodes that might have been incorrectly identified, and then we will see a few examples of how to aggregate aliases so when one person is referred to by multiple names. You might be wondering how Netlytic is able to recognize names. There are a few factors in determining if a word is a name or not. First, Netlytic relies on a dictionary of common English names to determine if a word is a name. Another factor is if the word is capitalized. And finally, Netlytic takes into account common words or phrases that would precede or follow a name such as high or best regards. In some cases, a word can be misclassified as a personal name. This may occur, for example, if a word is a name of a geographic place like Canada, a name of a building, or a name that is also considered a noun, such as hope. Let's walk through a simple example of cleaning our Facebook dataset from misclassified names. Start on the Network Analysis tab. In the Name Network Analysis box, click on the number of names found. This is how many unique personal names that Netlytic has found in the dataset. By clicking on this number, you can review all of the names, add or delete names as necessary. In the next screen, you will see a word cloud, similar to the visualization we created in the text analysis section. The bigger and bolder the name, the more frequently it appears in the dataset. At the top, from the drop-down list, you have the option to display the top 30, 50, or all of the names occurring. Then click Refresh. There are a few names in this data set that we can consider noise or misclassification. Words such as Canada, Bill C, Lee, Less, and Aid. To ensure the context in which the name is being used, you can click on individual words, which will then show all the instances that it has occurred. For instance, I was unsure if less was being used as a name or as the French masculine article meaning the. Let's check it out. In all of these cases, it seems that less is not a name, so we can go back to the word cloud and remove it. We do this by simply clicking on the red box with the X. If you need to add a name, you can type it into the text box at the top and click Add Name. 
This might occur if a foreign name which you know should be in the data set isn't recognized by the system. Sometimes one person can have multiple aliases. For instance, a man named John could be referred to as Jonathan, John, or Johnny. To help researchers reduce false positives in the social network, we will walk through how to aggregate aliases in Netlytic. Click on the number of names found, which will open the word cloud we used before. In the top left-hand corner, click Switch to Editing Name Aliases. Within this list, you can add or remove additional spellings to any name entities found by Netlytic. For instance, within the dataset, let's add the following to John Anderson. John A. Then click Add Name. For this example, I can also remove the name alias John by clicking the red X button. If you have made any changes by either deleting misclassified names or aggregating aliases, you must click Reanalyze for the changes to take effect in the network visualization. For instance, earlier one of the words we deleted from the personal names word cloud was Bill C. As a quick note, Bill C is not a name. Rather, it's a reference to a piece of Canadian legislation. Before our network looked like this, and here we can clearly see where Bill C is located in the network. Now, after we reanalyze the results, if we search for Bill C, it does not appear in the network. Thanks for watching. For more information on how to use Netlytic, please visit our YouTube channel. Documentation can also be found at our website at netlytic.org.